Hey everybody, welcome to the FN Studios. This is Fight News Now Extra. I'm John Ramdean. He is Robin Black. Some news to get to. Uh, apparently, Mirko Krokop is calling it a day, according to his website, that uh, he had to pull out of this fight with uh, Anthony Hamilton that was supposed to go down in Seoul, Korea, headlined by Ben Henderson and Thiago Alves. A shoulder injury. He said, you know, this is the way things go. Uh, I have to pull out of this fight. There's fluid buildup. Do you believe it? The UFC has, uh, hasn't released a statement, but we know how these guys are. They're, they go through the grind. Mirko Krokop has been doing this for a long time, a long, long time, mixed martial arts for a long time. And then you look at his kickboxing career. Uh, the guy's been through the war, so you can understand a, a fighter getting ready for battle, and then they have to pull out. It must be very, very frustrating, considering the guy's 41 years of age. But I wouldn't be surprised. You get yourself all healed up. Uh, in a year or so from now, you're 42, you're feeling good. It's like, you know what? The UFC offers me Dan Henderson uh, for their first show in Croatia. I have a feeling he'll say yes. Yeah, so I think we need to be honest and we need to start looking at when fighters announce their retirement, we got to start looking at it as their first retirement. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? No, Honestly, no. they... Uh, this is uh, his third, I yeah, think. This is his third, but in, in your first retirement, the day that'll happen sometimes is either a great win and you're like, that's it, this is the one to go out on, or a tough loss and some injuries, or when all of the extra new challenges that happen in your late 30s come, it hurts, I'm injured, I had to cancel fights, the weight cut is different, my wife doesn't want to put up with this anymore, outweighs the beauty and the glory of, of your love of fighting. When that outweighs it, you announce your first retirement. And then six months later, that, the desire for that again, that, that true combat, that ability to do what you've been training to do your whole life. You feel you never felt so good in the gym. Best training camp I ever had. <laughs> then you come back. And then some of those new things, and then it is your second retirement. And that is the truth. We can't sugarcoat that. We don't have to act every time that somebody retires like it's a definitive thing because we've learned that it isn't. Uh, earlier this week, Alan Belcher also uh, announcing his retirement for mixed martial arts. Seems like it's a very, very tough game. Uh, mm. We talked about how, how quickly it was becoming a young man's sport. And it's, it is amazing to see guys like Dan Henderson and Mirko Krokop still competing Frank in the Mir. sport. Frank Mir, if they, if they uh, decide to. But I think the, the reality is setting in for everybody that uh, even these young kids, uh, we had the chance to talk to some of the Rufus Sports guys, and they said the, there are these two kids coming out of Windsor that are 16 years of age that are just tearing it up in the gym, hanging with full-blown professionals. So you could see how it would be a very difficult challenge for somebody in their late 30s or in their 40s and a fighter that's had a lot of miles. It doesn't matter what you do, that there are younger ones coming up and they have all the knowledge that you or the people before you uh, took so much time and effort to acquire and they can learn it from YouTube, they can learn it from Google. They have a coach that was trained by your coach. It all, it, it all happens. You know, the conversation of retirement is a long one. We're going to talk about it on five rounds today, maybe next week. These guys, you look at the reality. Some of the smart young fighters realize that you must have an exit strategy. Fighting is not a lifelong profession. It's a thing that is a part of your life. It's a part of your growing and evolving as a human being. It's some beautiful stuff that you get to do. But some of them don't have that. And guys like Mirko come, and Dan Henderson come from an era where this is who they are. Yeah. And uh, this is going to be who they are until they decide it isn't. And for some of them, it'll be sad and scary after they, they really retire. I have a feeling that Mirko Krokop and Dan Henderson made a couple of bucks. I know there's a lot of people out there that have still never heard of mixed martial arts. And to think how far we've con come from no holds barred to the great sport of MMA. And when I was uh, out at Justin Bruckman's camp, he said when we first, first started training, our head coach was a blue belt. Because yeah. you look in this room, we have three black belts or four black belts in here right now and a brown belt, everybody giving knowledge. So the knowledge just gets faster and faster. And all these students, they don't have to go to different places. They can get all the information under one roof. And that's why the sport has well, uh, gained so much momentum. Just think about that for a second. So Justin Bruckman fought George St. Pierre only one generation ago. He was one of the great pioneers in Canadian mixed martial arts as this, this thing happened, learning yeah. from a blue belt. Now he's got a kid, 21 years old, man child in his gym who's about three and oh, and maybe about a minute and a half of fighting. <laughs> and when you watch him move, the, it's so beautiful to see how Justin's knowledge and the people around him and the good, the good training partners and the, everything that he has, has made him move in ways that, that the greats never moved a generation ago. And he's only 21 years old. Those kids out of Reno's down in Windsor, yeah. You know, uh, it really is an incredible thing, and it will be so amazing to watch these athletes in five years and in ten years, and we'll still be doing this, and we're going to get our minds blown every year seeing the great evolution. But it, just as much as we're witnessing this, 
Dan, Mirko, guys like this are seeing it too and they still want their place in it because they built it. Uh, you see the next generation, a guy that we were talking about as being the younger generation that was going to achieve success in mixed martial arts. Michael McDonald making his return to the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Took, it took a little bit of time away, I think, just to figure things out because it's a very, very tough sport. And we're hearing so many fighters now and coaches talking to their fighters, okay, this is a short window uh -huh. uh, of time that you can dedicate to mixed martial arts competition. There has to be an exit strategy. So figure out how long you're going to dedicate to the sport sport and then figure out what you're going to do afterwards. Michael McDonald going through that, you know, everybody recognized this kid was very, very talented. Thrown in there with the lions of the division, take, as I mentioned before, took some time away from the sport, strength and conditioning, now comes back to the sport, I think, with more hunger. This is a fun conversation. On one end, we have Henderson and Krokop, and then on the other hand, we have these teenagers, and then right in the middle, you've got these McDonald's who were those teenagers, yeah. and now you're finding the challenging realities of what it is that you do. This isn't unique to fighting. When you're 19 years old and you start in the mailroom, by the time you're 40, you're gonna be the president of the company. You're gonna make the steps up. But on the way up, you realize there's politics and there's all kinds of real challenges, there's business structure, all that shit you didn't want to learn about. Michael McDonald suddenly realizing he was young and eager and he was going to be the champion of the world. And now you get into your mid and late 30s and you're like, I got to make sure I pay my mortgage, I got to make sure I make money. Should I be taking these fights for this kind of money? The, the fearlessness of charging through your career is taken over by all the scary realities. It's wild, man. Very exciting to think about uh, the direction of mixed martial arts, but we have got you covered for one of the biggest pay-per-views uh, that's going down this weekend in Melbourne, Australia. Ronda Rousey taking on Holly Holm for the 135 pound championship and tune in to our preview show one hour long at 7 p.m. Eastern on Saturday. And then tune in right after the pay-per-view for our post-fight show that we'll have the post-fight press conference and we'll break down all the action that went down at UFC Night 193 Live.